Greetings. Welcome to our series of weekly devotionals where we take a look at one of the lectionary readings for the upcoming week and offer some thoughts for meditation, prayer, reflection, etc. This week we're taking a look at some verses in chapter 19 of the book of Acts, the Acts of the Apostles, and these verses uh, deal uh, specifically with, with baptism. You know, I remember several years ago, I was, I think it was, uh, I was early in my uh, tenure at uh, at Forks UCC, and an adult woman came to me, and uh, she said she wanted to be uh, baptized. Now, I, I, I eventually discovered that she already had been baptized as a little girl, uh, but she felt that her faith had been renewed coming to Forks UCC, and so she wanted to uh, be rebaptized and uh, and so I I did I I baptized her again I I later learned that in the United Church of Christ tradition uh, we generally don't do that sort of thing <laughs> that once you're baptized you're baptized but uh, I've never been one to uh, really follow the rules all that well I suppose I remember a couple of years later uh, doing a service in which we didn't an affirmation of baptism, that those folks who had been baptized could come up to the front, dip their fingers in the water of, of the font, and and uh, we would affirm their baptismal vows. And I remember someone uh, came up and said to me uh, in line, uh, by the way, uh, I've never been baptized. And I said, eh, it's all right. We'll affirm, we'll affirm your baptism anyway. Like I said, I've always been sort of uh, loosey-goosey with uh, the rules, um, maybe to my detriment. But uh, I, I know some Christian denominations, some Christian churches have very, very rigid and steadfast rules uh, about baptism. Um, some churches say, well, we, only baptize, well we, we will only baptize individuals when they're adults. Uh, dunk them in the water, and uh, the reason for this is so that uh, so that folks can understand, uh, have a more comprehensive understanding of of what is going on in the sacrament of baptism. Uh, but my my take is that uh, baptism, as with as with any religious practice, uh, involves mystery because it involves God. And maybe that's the reason for my sort of loosey-goosey attitude is that no matter what we're doing, do we really truly understand what is going on in this practice? Uh, if it involves God, then probably not. And in our passage uh, th that we're looking at uh, this week, um, Paul uh, learns that some of the believers in Ephesus have been baptized in the name of John. And then Paul goes on to say in verse 5, uh, you should be baptized, and, and indeed Paul does baptize them in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. But of course, in other parts of the gospel uh, message, for example, the gospel of Matthew, uh, Jesus says that we should baptize in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. So which is it? Which is the right way? Well, my take on that is that the form of baptism whether we baptize infants or adults, whether we baptize only once or rebaptize, whether we affirm baptism, uh, whatever we do, uh, the form is not the most important thing. Because whatever we do, uh, it involves the mystery of God. And the mystery and the presence of God is, is what is important. And we can rest assured <clears throat> that no matter what form we use, what practice we use, uh, God will be there. God will be present, and, and that is really, in the end, the only thing that matters. Amen.